Hi friends, welcome to the NPTEL course Strategy and Technology, a Practical Primer. We are in week 5 with the theme of Buyers, Suppliers and Competitors. In this lecture, which is the 24th in this series, we are discussing market signaling. In the previous lecture, we discussed the topic of competitive moves. A competitive move is made by a firm in a growth situation, in a turnaround situation or any other situation where the company wants to take some progressive action. It is not that every company would announce its competitive moves by itself as being competitive moves. It is up to the other players to decipher the competitive moves and absorb it from the marketplace actions or announcements. This is here, this is where the theory of market signaling becomes important. Market signaling theory helps us understand competitive moves which are not so declared by competitors. A market signal is any action by a firm that provides a direct or indirect indication of its intentions, motives, goals or internal situation. This theory helps us in competitive strategy development. At times market signals are not very precise nor are they very robust. Global economic developments are so profound that market signals are often distorted or they become not so definitive indicators of the corporation's intention and action. At times even innocuous signals could be the harbingers of resolutely incredible strategies. It happened in the case of Google CEO exiting the Apple port and it was uh, indicative of Google's future plans in the hardware industry. Startup companies that are hardly noticed by the general industry represent another great example of weak signals turning into strong movements. As I said, not all competitive moves are declared openly by the firms. It is up to the firms to imagine, visualize or interpret the likely competitive moves from market signals. We should also be aware that firms provide certain market signals deliberately to confuse and confound competitors and in some cases to discourage the competitors. In his work on competitive strategy, Michael Porter proposes that reading market signals should be considered an essential supplement to competitor analysis and also as an important adjunct to making effective competitive moves. A market signal, as I said, is any action by a firm that provides a direct or indirect indication of its intentions motives, goals. Actions will be very visible, but intentions, motives and goals of a company are not so visible. Even statements by a company may not be firm indicators that those statements would be converted into actual reality. That is where the theory of market signaling and the judgmental processes involved in understanding the market signals come into play. Together, these intentions, motives and goals represent a firm's external aspirations and also reflect internal capabilities. There is a major emphasis that can be given to market signals despite the fact that some are bluffs and some are genuine and some are just warnings. Although there is subtlety that is involved in interpreting market signals, we cannot say that we will spend all our time in understanding the market signals. At times it becomes important for us to focus on our own strengths and keep developing those strengths. In the overall, timely recognition and accurate reading of market signals helps a firm understand the evolving market space better, individual firms marketing actions, competitive actions better and take appropriate strategy development actions. We also need to refurbish this theory from what Porter proposed in 1980s to suit contemporary business environment. Firms these days generate so much information that it is both a science and an art to segregate the noise and note the right signals. Publicly listed companies have got several regulatory requirements. Any material development has to be informed to the stock exchanges. Any outcome of board meeting has to be informed to the stock exchanges. Quarterly reports have to be put on the exchange sites in time. Board meeting deliberations if they have material outcomes have to be informed. In addition, companies have to do unlist calls, investor meets and that is the forum for generating lot of material information and it is available in the public reckoning. There is of course some information which won't be available in the public reckoning 
but the signs and flavors of those information bits will be available to witness for key observers of the industry. In addition, the growth of the internet, search engines and networking sites means that the sets of information on thought strategies and execution of corporations are now more abundantly than they were available at any point of time in the past. So this mandatory requirement plus voluntary disclosure is a very powerful concoction for information generation and growth in an exponential manner. Now the protection of intellectual property is a global endeavor. We will know what intellectual property has been applied for by which company and which patents have been granted or rejected. We also know which devices have got what kind of approvals and what is the likelihood of those devices getting into the marketplace. So this massive upsurge in information requires a particular department, for example the strategy department, to focus only on reading of market signals. And for reading of market signals, we should know where the sources of those signals could be. The forms of market signals and their respective sources are summarized below. One, prior announcement of moves. Companies would like to announce their moves ahead of their happening. And it happens for two reasons. To make an interest alive in the stakeholders or to attract new investors to come to the company's investment plaza. Second, announcement of results. This is the mandatory requirement for companies to keep stakeholders in a frame of good governance. Third, the announcements of actions after the facts. There could be a plant which is inaugurated, there could be a plant which is commissioned, there could be a license agreement which has been entered into. As soon as such actions take place, which are all considered material actions, the company should announce those actions. Public discussions of the industry and the firm by other firms, that is a market signal need not necessarily emanate from the firm which we are looking at. There could be public discussions in the industry, especially by the rating agencies, by the analysts on the stock exchange and the investors. And those could be very good market signals. At times companies make profound statements on competitive positioning and moves. As I referred to earlier, Reliance uh, Industries makes statements on the future course of its strategy. And those are the kinds of announcements which are very useful in understanding competitive positioning and moves. Discussion on tactics that could have been pursued. Many times uh, field level people talk about what could have been done and what should not have been done. Those discussions also give a lot of insight into how the company thought about its strategy. Quick implementation actions. Every strategy as it gets rolled out will have certain implementation acts. Sometimes strategies which are not announced may also have early implementation actions. These must be read thoroughly. Comparison of results and goals tells us how strong the competitor has been in putting its strategy into effective practice. There could be cross parry of information and actions in related or unrelated areas. That is also very important. When a particular automobile company says that my goal is to support all the group companies and also related uh, associate companies in their mobility needs, it is a cross parry because it is not directly related to what it does in its marketplace. It is trying to create a new uncontested market space. That could be a cross parry which observers must note. Fighting of brands, taking legal actions and public as well as private antitrust suits provide a lot of information and those suits have a lot of embedded information that needs to be studied and analyzed. Following decisions can be understood or likely decisions can be understood. One, capacity preemption, entry deterrence, threat of competitive response, setting or resetting industry government equilibrium, testing of uh, competitor sentiment, red herrings or strategic deflections, subtle or open brand building in the marketplace and image building amongst stakeholders could all be coming up because of the market signals. While there are several forums that are available for market signals from routine stock exchange communications to exclusive media events, we need to understand what would be useful for analyzing what kind of information, particularly with reference to operational performance and strategic future 
analyst reports and investor conference calls provide lot of inputs which are very material and which are very helpful. There are some aspects of market signaling that are more contemporary in nature. A company's investments in the environmental empathy, social responsibility and corporate governance constitute a new trajectory of information provision by companies and these are also indicative of the idea of the company getting to, to the top class of the industry and probably it could also mean that the company is aiming for international investor interest that could be a market signal as well apart from that being good on its own. In India, regulatory requirements have had certain unique additional disclosure requirements which are not generally present in the US or other jurisdiction companies. These relate to capacity that is installed capacity and utilized capacity, production, imports, exports, R&D, technology assimilation, energy consumption. These kinds of additional information pieces that are available in the company annual reports because of the special Indian regulations also are extremely useful for analyzing the market signals. Companies also are required to provide comprehensive management discussion and analysis of plans and results with additional information on risk management, internal controls and salary analysis. In addition, the sustainability reporting also provides additional uh, cream of information on what the company wants to do. As companies uh, aspire to bring in uh, global investments through global depository receipts or other actions, comprehensive prospectuses would need to be created and these provide a lot of information on the nature and extent of the company's infrastructure and future plans. Disclosures on environment, safety and health aspects as well as corporate social responsibility provide additional insights on the quality of the management of the firm. In the ESG environment, these signify differentiated firms and probably they are all set for a higher level of investment which could be a competitive advantage vis-a-vis -vis other firms which are not in that class. Certifications by major regulatory agencies also constitute several important signals. Customer facing information, regulatory and compliance reporting, credit ratings all together provide tangible and relevant source of signal information for and from firms. For a company in the pharmaceutical industry, FDA approvals, FDA 483 form observations, FDA warning letters, import alerts provide great information on the firms. And these are also of relevance for other firms because if a FDA warning letter takes shape, then that capacity would be temporarily at least will be knocked off the industry's supply capability. That provides an opportunity for other firms to enter that space. So tracking the regulatory agencies is very important. Similarly, as part of the ESG initiative, if a company gets into green building initiatives, that is an additional point which needs to be noted. A company's uh, ISO certification, OSHA certification, the latter being for occupational safety and health would provide greater uh, sustainability and strength to the company's plans and for future investments. Rating agencies, for example, CRISIL provide company reports and ratings of bonds and debt instruments. That is again another good signal. Bureau of Indian Standards is equivalent of uh, previous ISI and they provide the quality certification, another very important uh, indicator. The Sustainability Accounting Standards Board is an indicator of the rating. MSCI and other agencies provide uh, ranking of ESG contributing companies and that is also something which needs to be taken note of by companies. World Intellectual Property Organization publishes a database of various patent applications by various companies and also the overall trends. These are useful indicators of the product innovation of various companies. Therefore, the market signals are very varied and they are more open than ever. They arise from the companies, they arise also from the certification agencies. They are uh, generated as part of the regulatory filings, they are also generated as part of dealing with investors, analysts and the customers. 
The theory of market signaling is further vitiated by the unprecedented volatility in global economic conditions. Typically, tactics require an up to one year timeline, whereas strategy requires a timeline which is greater than one year. In the previous lectures, we also discussed that the five year time frame which used to exist for strategy is no longer appropriate. We may have to have strategic reviews every quarter in every year and the strategic time frame could be compressed to as low as three years. But at the same time, in infrastructure for companies, we may have to extend the strategic horizon to as high as 15 years or 20 years. So market signals have to be read in conjunction with those related to tactics or those related to strategy. It has also become difficult for companies to predict how the commodity prices and availability would move. Steel was under structural uh, constraints for uh, as long as one decade. But over the last two years, surprisingly after COVID-19 pandemic, metals entered a commodity super cycle. Only few months ago, everybody was talking about the commodity super cycle being a multi-year bull run and the commodity pricing touching new highs. On the other hand, what we find today is that there has been a 30% softening of the steel prices. Similarly, it has become very difficult to predict when and how the crude price would move. Would it touch $100 or would it touch $50 is something on which nobody is able to predict in the right manner. So wild swings in the price of basic inputs severely affect strategies that are built around these inputs. Therefore, they also affect the competitive moves that could be discerned from the market signals. And agriculture is also one uh, area where uh, climate volatility is impacting the nature of agriculture, the production of agricultural products, grains, pulses and all those things and the export prospects. So market signals from industries which are affected by globally volatile trends in a way are not appropriate for any competitive analysis. However, they must be kept as record and reference and we should also observe the cyclicality and the impact of different uh, parameters on such inputs. The other aspect of volatility is that it always brings in herd behavior. That is, if the spike is occurring, everybody would like to participate in that growth. If three people announce their intention to increase their capacities, the balanced 10 players in the industry would also announce their intention to expand their capacity. It is a kind of uh, herd behavior. Economic volatility has a contagion effect on social attitudes and behavior. When incomes are threatened by inflation, individuals drive up demand for precious metals through hoarding rather than prudentially conserving cash. Similarly, firms, when they are faced with uh, recession and job losses, instead of stimulating the purchasing power, they further undercut the jobs, they further close down the units and impact the purchasing power in an adverse way. So the rationale of the moves towards economic cycles is not always rational. Therefore, uh, companies must look beyond those volatile signals and take the right kind of judgment. Irrational mass behavior is not beyond the capability of even evolved corporations. So we need to be very clear that Companies which follow certain contrary trends are doing that for good reasons. They want to be differentiated from the pack and they want to keep their equanimity, reinforce their strengths further and they want to be ready when the market upswing takes place. The ability to read market signals in differently while noting the overbearing economic trends is a new age requirement and firms which are wanting to be competitive must meet those requirements. Let us look at what happened because of COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic was unprecedented. It resulted in a major shift in demand patterns. It also resulted in a major shift in the relative importance and growth potential of industries and markets were unpredictable. People thought that markets would are in for a deep dive down. On the other hand, markets staged a very smart recovery and they had a V-shaped recovery even if the economy itself was in a U-shaped recovery mode. People as much as uh, even uh, foreign observers and uh, Indian experts began saying that the Indian economy and the stock markets somewhat decoupled. On the other hand, there are people who say 
and rightly so that stock markets always discount the future the good or the bad and the v shaped recovery indicates that indian economy is particularly strong in the face of covid pandemic the country has managed the covid pandemic well and the economy is poised to be one of the front runners after the covid 19s these judgments that need to be made by companies are very important in understanding the market signals in the right way so let's see what happened because of the covid 19 crude and commodities prices picked up sales were down jobless were up real economy was down but markets were up global shift of products processes inputs happened and everybody want to have now a china plus one strategy everybody recognize the importance of companies and nations on china and everybody would like to do this some companies announced their intentions to do it in their own countries but everybody is also aware that would be an infeasible work already countries such as america are having the great resignation movement so imagine uh, shifting pharmaceutical industry to america and trying to create those resources is going to be well nigh impossible so china plus one offers a great opportunity for india for taking this space of china in several of the products be it specialty chemicals pharmaceuticals semiconductors or several other areas because of covid 19 business cycles are on but economic stimuli have proved to be the key production linked incentive schemes atmanirbhar stimulus measures provision of uh, food grains therefore the need for higher food grain production and so on interest rates were down inflation however is perking up from the point of view of uh, spending patterns essential spending patterns are up discretionary spending patterns are down health needs have taken a great uh, spike and luxury is waiting zincovit a little known brand became the largest brand because of the covid 19 manufactured by apex laboratories in chennai so those are the kinds of transformations that happened vitamins and minerals became one of the strongest therapeutic area in the pharmaceutical field work from home has become a reality and real estate up work from home when it becomes a reality just doesn't mean it is a process it requires several thousands and lakhs more of computers connectivity devices and also the real estate that would promote a home office uh, concept e-commerce is up malls are down labor is laid off but industries continue to revive the movement for self reliance has taken a new hue after covid 19 but at the same time there are question marks on the level of globalization so the ability to read these individual markets signals differently while also noting the overwhelming economic impact is an important aspect of market signal theory contrary trends always emerge in the economies neither the past nor the current is likely to be a clear indicator of the future with certainty so the reading of market signals would also be similarly placed it is necessary but not completely indicative of the future we also must look at the public discussions and private influences several ceos are today participating in industry movements people come on the cnbc and talk about economic developments firm level developments evolution of demand and the competitiveness of the company they also talk about their particular strategies with reference to the commodity prices stock prices industry events private information at times disclosed deliberately corporate strategies subtle changes that are not visible unless they are spoken about and also the product corporate certifications these are all the market signals which arise from public discussions of uh, company executives the industry level public discussions can lead to meaningful market signaling but the truthfulness or the appropriateness or the perfection of those statements has always been in doubt that's where porter's theory that much of the market signaling is also perception building on the positive side and bluffing on the negative side becomes relevant so the public discussions when they become also discussions or discourses in the nature of herd behavior there is nothing much we can discern from those public discussions 
they at best serve as signals at an industry level as to what industry captains are thinking collectively about the nature and state of the industry and what the industry should be doing they are probably not still the best signals for what the firms could be doing in a competitive manner they are not the inputs for individual corporate strategy formulation on a firm to firm basis it also depends on the transparency of the various stakeholders how much they are willing to share of their real experiences and any information that we shared on a positive light is always aimed at the customer base or the investor base or at times the regulatory base transparency is linked to these three stakeholder groups and we have to tap appropriate information for these kinds of announcements let's look at some of the points that is public discussions getting complicated by private influences and also private discussions could be at variance with what publicly are disclosed automakers may differ significantly in their product and business strategies but may strike a common ground publicly everybody will talk about low emission vehicles everybody may also say that electrification is not the only solution we could have different types of low emission approaches for different kinds of vehicles however a full line manufacturer could quietly planning a major shift in product mix in favor of different kinds of vehicles while saying that i am going in for electric vehicles a full line car manufacturer may come up with a fuel economy innovation that cuts fuel cost by 50% even when crude is being utilized that is even when petroleum or diesel is being utilized and that could be a major game changer until electrification arrives in the full scale so those are the things which are not always disclosed similarly public assurances of individual firms providing pan industry services need to be reinterpreted based on their strategic moves in august 2011 google the supplier of android os acquired motorola's mobile division this pointed to a possibility of google entering the device market and competing with other handset makers however google sold off the acquired mobile division to lenovo in january 2014 within 3 years however it continued to have its nexus series of mobile devices and later brought in this superior pixel device lineup in october 2016 so what does it mean it means that selling of a particular division would have been seen by someone else as being disinterested in the mobile phone business but the actual reality panned out in a different way it sold off its acquired device business but went on to develop some organic device business so the views expressed by individual firms in public forums must be interpreted in terms of technical and business characteristics of such firms their own expressed and hidden strategic moves signals need not necessarily be strategies market signals by themselves do not lead to major competitive moves they are like dots which appear on the screen it is to the skill of the people who read the dots to connect the dots and try to form a trend line or a canvas when galaxy s6 came out with its edge methodology of cellular phones not everybody took it seriously this is a case where the competitive action was very much there as a product but several companies chose to ignore it it was not a wheeled signal it was an open signal of creating a new range that is based on edge technology even companies such as apple might have wondered why they ignored such a trend but at times when they ignore it for a long time it becomes rather difficult for such firms to incorporate those developments they instead choose for something which is beyond the edge technology nokia plumped for the windows operating system for its mobile phones but it never saw the signals that were coming from the windows operating system that it could hardly garner more than 1% of the market share at any point of time and more and more uh, hard where makers that is cellular phone makers were uh, moving away from windows system to android system what it meant quite uh, um, blatantly was that mobile system operation through windows would not be effective and customers do not like it nor microsoft had the ability at that point of time to come up with something which was uh, as effective as android or ios 
Nokia didn't recognize this trend. First, it didn't recognize the obsolescence of its original Symbion operating system. Later on, it refused to recognize the importance of Android operating system and instead uh, played uh, company with the uh, Windows mobile system, which was not uh, very good. Therefore, Nokia had to exit from its uh, loss-making mobile division. So, competitive landscape has to be very clear and also backed by better understanding. A needle in the haystack type of search for weak or confusing market signals is as bad as an inability to note the signals which are very patent and which are giving us warning signals loud and clear. As I said, signals are not same as strategies. Signals amplify the strategy for better understanding of individual components within the holistic strategy. Signals indicate the level of capital commitment, manpower recruitment, product renewal, technology choices, infrastructure development, and pricing competitiveness. They all signify the vigor with which a company is trying to pursue a strategy and execute it. They also reflect that the strategy is getting recalibrated with reference to the prior experience. When Reliance said that I am selling off certain stake in telecom and retail business to technology and PE giants, it means that the Reliance uh, juggernaut is uh, reflective of the debt burden that it has brought in. It could also mean that the company would like to pair the debt to a net zero position so that it could take on more resources for the next generation of infrastructure investments. Similarly, seeking of participation by Saudi Aramco in the principal oil and gas business what was another signal to say that its petroleum business is not going to be in the sunset area. There would be investors who would back. Entry into new renewables energy business is a clear signal that it wants to become a new energy giant. It would like to compete with the global players in this area. And similarly, it's a sporadic decisions to acquire some telecom infrastructure in other countries, European countries especially, is also indicative that it would like to be not merely a national telecom player, but a global telecom player also. So these underline the sustainability of the technology and strategic strengths that companies have. Lack of overt signals like these cannot mean that the company has no commitment to articulated strategy. Competitors must be watchful of subtle but definitive strategic moves that happen under the radar by the makers of those moves. How do you get surety from subtlety? Strategy is not set in stone by companies. Fast changing environment requires frequent course corrections. Market signals therefore appear to be confusing at times counter to each other. That's because market signals emanate from multiple as well as newer and more varied sources on a continuous basis. Environmental volatility dictates a fluctuating amplitude of these signals. And in well-run organizations, signals and strategies tend to be well aligned. But not every organization is a well-run organization. If there are 20 players in an industry, not everybody gives a clear signal as Marty Suzuki saying that I am not so interested in electric vehicle. I am however very much interested in a CNG vehicle. So that is a very clear signal. But not everybody gives the signal that way. So this enables or requires greater surety in assessment. Subtlety arises from the adoption of a three-step process. Focus on the strategy along with the signals. Don't look at only the signals. Focus on the strategy of the company as well. Evaluate the strategy in terms of volatility and competencies. That is, external volatility and internal competencies have to be seen as providing the backdrops to the strategy of the competitor. And then utilize the signals to calibrate the strength of the strategy. What is to be read primarily is the strength of the strategy. What is to be used supplementally are those market signals which can be wide and also confusing at times. It is no longer feasible or appropriate for firms to provide random signals without a well-developed strategy. Today, people cannot keep on uh, drawing red herrings on what they would like to do because their strategy has to be clear because it is a material expression of its intention. Issues of materiality and corporate governance in public disclosures rule out intentional signal aberration. So what was thought about in the 1970s and 1980s as a perfectly legitimate and deployed ploy by companies to confuse and confound others is no longer feasible. You have to be somewhat true to the script of what 
the strategy is and what the signals are. Surety also emerges from subtlety in the analysis of strategies and signals as for the following examples. For example, the kind of the leader that a firm selects to lead a new business or renew the existing business. Recently, when uh, leaders left companies, they were seen as signals that something is not so great about uh, the developments in the company. So leadership and the selection of new leaders, expansion of the leadership bench give significant insights into the strategy that is going to be adopted by the company. Similarly, the type of consulting firm a firm selects to chart a new growth strategy indicates its dedication to get the world's best strategy in place. This is whether it is going to be a high quality growth paradigm or an also run kind of paradigm will be judged by the type of consulting organization the company takes. Similarly, when the company is taking up a huge project, the type of project engineering consultant the company selects has also a lot of importance and a lot of influence in respect of the intended uh, utility and the intended quality levels of that facility. And similarly, continuation of key growth in investments, key growth investments in R&D and manpower in times of recession provide solid evidence of the company's uh, commitment to technological path. The way you fill your uh, facilities with sophisticated equipment underscores the company's commitment to quality. They need not always be imported equipment. Even high quality Indian equipment, as long as they focus on quality by design or indicators of the quality approach of the company. The nature of the structural changes in an organization, the pace of the executive mobility, the attrition rate, the retention rate all reflect the firm's willingness to be adaptive and flexible. These insights could be developed out of the three-step process of strategy signal analysis as I mentioned earlier and that would be much more useful than a vanilla reading of traditional signals recommended by Porter in his 1980 work. Market signaling cannot be a laundry list and putting off some facts or fiction around that. They have to be read for their subtlety and some surety must be gained out of that subtlety. Hospira Inc. was the global generics player. It was a spin-off of Abbott's uh, hospital products division. It had a great growth up to 2010. But in 2010, it had certain quality issues relating to FDA observations. And the company had uh, three strategies to get out of this uh, issue. One, employ high quality consultants to remove the difficulties, scale up op operations, including entry into India and diversify into biologics and this strategy had clear market signals. It was also a subscriber to McKinsey and Company's POBOS which is former operations benchmark which meant that the company was willing to subject itself to global audit in terms of its operational efficiency. So operational efficiency was one of the key drivers for Hospira's growth. Its uh, CSOs relating to biology gave investor presentations on development and manufacturing strategies for biosimilars. Its investor presentations were always reinforcing Hospira's global leadership positions in generic injectables such as 30 plus percentage in uh, generic injectables and uh, being number two in the devices. It was global number one in terms of generic injectables at 37 percent or so. It also clearly signaled its intention to acquire orchids uh, world-class state-of-the-art manufacturing infrastructure for antibiotics and also establish a new greenfield non-antibiotics injectables facility in Vizag, India. These were all market signals that were openly articulated as part of the strategic definition by Hospira and none by none other than its chief executive Mike Ball. So the insightful and effective strategy that was developed and executed by Hospira built exceptional value for the company. It led to a mega USD 17 billion acquisition of Hospira by Pfizer. So market signals interest people because of what the company was doing and expressing in terms of its actions and thoughts respectively it excited and got Pfizer interested in evaluating Hospira 
for acquisition when the time was ripe and when the hospital moved out of all its issues and was ready for next leg of growth. So market signals are important in creating new collaboration platforms and new investment platforms as well. At times, uh, signals which are seeming to be innocuous could be reflective of incredible strategies. The CEO of Google was on the board of directors of Apple for a long time, but he exited the board of Apple in August 2009. It was actually an indicator of Google's strategy to enter the cellular communication and computing arena, and it was further fortified by the acquisition of the Android entity. The CEO of Google moved out of Apple board because of potential conflict of interest. If you are going to operate in the same space that Apple is operating in, it is appropriate that the board level uh, position is exited. Similarly, the company's strategy to make a Google phone nexus was indicative of its desire to the mobile device space. And it was also established in no uncertain terms by the acquisition of the Motorola's mobile device base. But its divestment doesn't indicate that it gave up all the hopes of operating in the cellular phone business. Probably it was related to the consideration that Motorola's mobile device business did not give the kind of spread that would launch the company on a wider cellular phone path. It launched its own high-end Pixel Premium phones initially in collaboration with uh, LG and later on in collaboration with other uh, Chinese companies. Strategists must therefore uh, brood on such innocuous signals which could be emanating from different sources, particularly if they are related to leadership movements and leadership statements. Samsung's entry into the biologics business was seen at some point of time as a confusing signal. But today when you look at Industry 4.0, which looks at the amalgamation of uh, mechanical or physical world, the software or the digital world and the biological world or genetic world, one can see that Samsung's entry into biologics years ago was indicative of a great movement towards industry 4.0 by the company. People should have noted that people who had the same level of capability, be it the Sony or be it the Toshiba should have noted this and seen whether these strategies are worth emulating or worth improving upon. So it requires more than hard analytics to identify which one of signals or clear indicators of nascent moves backed by immaculate and resolute strategies in the background or which are probably not so clear but could get developed, could get better over time. It requires insight, intuition and wisdom to judge these signals. As I said, there are always signals from the startups. Startup companies are hardly noticed by the general industry. Startup companies are very much noticed by the private equity investors because that is their business and they believe that even if one startup clicks the way they envisage, it would make up for all the other uh, lackluster investments that may happen based on the bets that are being taken. Startup industry is one example, a collective example of weak signals turning into strong movements. Many of the health tracking applications have arisen from the startup movement. Many of the new drug discovery candidates arose from the startup movement. Many of the novel pathways that were discovered for known drugs emanated from the startups. Many of the adventurous actions to take a discarded product of a multinational pharmaceutical firm into clinical trials and bringing back into the mainstream were taken by startup firms. Often, major firms are so preoccupied with the analysis of their peers that they fail to notice the major shifts in industrial structure that are happening due to the pioneering technologies and businesses that startups are pursuing. It is the disruptive innovation that is going to come and engulf the mainstream players from the startup arena. Cisco, Microsoft and Google have been major technology giants in software and communication. Cisco, in fact, has been one of those pioneers in uh, telephone-based uh, visual uh, communication. However, it was Zoom that pioneered a connectivity revolution in the post-COVID work-from-anywhere scenario. While the technology giants did come back with their own connectivity platforms in good times, they considered a huge early mover advantage to Zoom. Today, established automobile manufacturers are yet to take seriously the efforts being made by electric vehicle startups. For example, Bajaj Auto is not fully convinced that electric two-wheeler would be a game changer. 
they are relying more on the likely failure of these uh, upcoming uh, two-wheeler manufacturers in the electric space than on their own requirement and their own strengths in creating a viable and effective electric vehicle platform of Bajaj Auto. So whether these signals that are provided by Aether and Ola in electric two-wheeler segment are getting ignored by industry majors to their detriment or they have other plans which others should note will only be decided by time. So reading subtle signals that are in fact sound strategies requires an intuitive flair as much as analytical skills. So this startup space is something which mainstream companies need to carefully look at. So with this we come to the end of this lecture. We will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.